Hey guys, welcome back Trip and Farm for Pop. I'm your host, Trip Coach, and let's jump right into it. So today I'm gonna try my best to weave together some information from uh, Alex Hormozzi. I've mentioned him before on my channel, and um, I'm probably biased against or with him due to the fact that he's a fitness person as well as gym owner and then scaled his gym business and sold it and taught courses on how to uh, do the same thing. So it resonates clearly with what I'm doing. He's now jumped into the crypto space with talking about NFTs and blockchain. His business has it, but he talks about it. So he understands AI and all this stuff. So really resonate with uh, him, especially in that regard, but also his um, entrepreneurial mindset that he's built for himself and the books and stuff that he's wrote. So what I want to tackle is a part of a tweet. And then it's also mentioned in a couple of his uh, podcasts but I want to tie it directly to the drip ecosystem from a business perspective. So when you, he has this tweet here, it says six figure entrepreneurs talk about prospects, seven figure talk about promotion, eight figure talk about product and nine figure talk about people. So nine figure, if you're not familiar with your numbers, that's a hundred million and up. And this reminded me of the three P's in business, which we're going to talk about shortly, but first, wanted to clear something up on there. So he's mentioned in his podcast that like, if you're trying to build your own business, then um, the first thing you need to do to get from zero to a million dollars is just focus on promotion. So even though he has it listed here, but he's talking about just from a business scaling perspective, um, I guess it's kind of the prospects and promotion he's tying together to get to a, a million dollars. Cause that's where seven figures comes from. But uh, in his podcast, he just says focus on promotion and that being that you just need to get really good at marketing and sales and having a great irresistible offer for people to latch on to. And all you need is one product, one channel um, and one irresistible offer, basically. So he's like, the, you should be able to get to a million dollars without any effort by focusing just on that, keeping it super simple. Then when you want to get from one to 10 million, then that's where the product comes into play. And then in between here, I've added 10 to 50 million, which is the process. So once you have that $10 million, getting the 10 to 50, you need to make things more efficient and start writing things down and systemizing. And then lastly, the people are still at the end. So still the exact same scenario, but I broke it down a little bit because if you're not familiar with the uh, Marcus, uh, Lemoy's uh, three P's of business, people, processes, and product, then you'll kind of see where this ties together. Now, what I want to go into specifically for us in the drip ecosystem is kind of looking at it from that business perspective and where we're at on this timeline, as well as in the figures that we've made. Now, drip has crossed over the, I don't know if we got to nine figures or not, to be honest, let me see something. I guess by simple math, we technically did because we were up over $100 per drip token and the supply then was at 1 million. So clearly we were in the nine figure range. I don't think it'll be showing up anywhere trying to chart that, but definitely that will work, right? So nine figures would be focusing on the people. But anyway, let's go back to this. So the way that I want to break this down is actually by going through those four elements that Alex mentioned and showing where we can find these improvements. This is just me kind of thinking out loud. This isn't anything that um, is being implemented or I think will be changed within the ecosystem. But remember, the important part about DeFi in general is that these are smart contracts. So anyone can take these kind of bullet points and steps along the way and do it themselves. So it's kind of me thinking out loud, sharing my thought process and of course, anybody out there that aligns with that will hopefully resonate with that. And maybe we can as a collective do something. So before we kind of jump into drip, we got to kind of evaluate where the business is at, right? So let's just say you were someone looking to acquire drip and you wanted to turn it around. Well, you would have to look at it from an objective lens and realize that over the last, let's say it's a case study. So over the last 18 months, we would definitely say that drip has seen better days. Uh, we have seen that the team itself is struggling to release new products and the community sentiment representative of the price is definitely low. And our flagship product, that being drip 
is down over 99% from all time highs. So this in and of itself would be extremely challenging to fix, but I believe that with the right step-by-step -step approach, it can be, right? So first thing we're gonna look at is some of the information from Alex's kind of thesis that he uses in his book and that he's mentioned in his podcast. So the first step would be trying to reignite the interest of this DeFi project by focusing on the promotion aspect. So remember, promotion isn't just about making a lot of noise. It's about delivering the right message to the right audience. And in that, we would have to focus on creating a story that articulates the value of the product and why it matters to the users. And I think that's what Drip originally did. There was a lot of uh, positive sentiment of people's lives being changed, all these amazing things that it was doing. So that promotional aspect tied to the bull run was definitely there. There was charities and all sorts of stuff that really helped drive and ignite the success of Drip. And he, once again, Forex at that stage was leveraging AMAs on multiple uh, uh, channels, uh, doing some other talks and stuff, I think voice chats and whatnot. So there was definitely a positive sentiment. Now going forward, that could be recapitalized, restructured in kind of rebranding if necessary to reignite that. And it's not too late, but it worked before and it can work again if there's a common thread that you weave together. So that'd be step one, focusing on the promotional aspects of Drip because the current promotional aspects is hoping that the community puts out positive content or bullish content or whatever you want to say, positive price action content, but that's clearly not going to work because it hasn't been working. So something has to change in that promotional aspect since. Step two would then be moving to the product right here. So the product is the heart of the business and our core product is down 99% from its all time high. So it's clear we need some kind of product innovation. So we need to understand what the users want, what they need, and what the market trends are and pivot if necessary. It's all about delivering real undeniable value to the clients and users of the Drip ecosystem. That might mean bringing in fresh talent, collaborating with other successful products and rethinking the tokenomics. Now, granted, we cannot change the tokenomics, but again, we're looking in the right direction because that's what Triple D is designed to do. So you can see that there's already things that we have in place, just a matter of doing them better, more effectively. So. The product in and of itself, as I mentioned multiple times, it's a feature, not a bug. It's not broken, but something has to be done with it. And that's also where all these additional products are being built on top of it. And that too can help with the product aspect. So as I mentioned to you guys before and showing you on the screen, you have like 12 that I am aware of different products that the Drip ecosystem is working on as a community collective. But next, we move to the actual process. So that's also found in here, people, product and process. So now this is where the three P's of business line up in uh, the books. And in the process side, let's actually scroll to that. Where is it? Here we go. Uh, the process side, you have to kind of focus on streamlining the workflows and increase efficiency in a standard business model. This involves setting clear, achievable goals, adapting agile methods, and using the right tools to help manage the work. It's time to embrace transparency and create a detailed roadmap and share progress regularly with the community. So this process would be integral to keeping the positive sentiment in the community itself and having some uh, look behind the scenes at the roadmap and where we're at on it. When I was doing the uh, Change 360 stuff with my team, we had our check-ins and we showed kind of the uh, Agile Scrum and the project management timeline and all this stuff. And then we made adjustments so that everybody could see clearly on like a little bar chart where we were at, what the expectations were, um, what was holding things up, where we were going from there, if they were held up, how the timeline would be affected, all that. I think this would be great to share with the community and let them know. It's like, okay, here's what we're currently working on. It's this project. And then, you know, we plan on having it done and we plan on testing in this time, whatever. So clear, the uh, transparent roadmaps and processes in place so that the community is no longer in the dark and they can actually help participate on this. Think about this from an outside perspective. Imagine if the community, especially content creators, medium, 
bloggers, TikTokers, Twitter tweets, and YouTubers were aware of what was coming up and, and they could work as a collective towards launch dates. Imagine how you could rally the sentiment because everybody knows what's going on and each person can put forth content in their area of expertise and you are flooding the internet with all this information about this thing. And if you uh, once again put this together in some kind of timeline and everybody knew about it, you could also weave the narrative that you wanted. So you could say, here's the brand images and the color and the voice that we wanna have. You guys can use this stuff in your own user-generated content. Da, 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 da. Like imagine how awesome that would be and how much positive sentiment could be gained from that versus what we've seen traditionally in DeFi, which is just like Twitter blast and discord raids with random stuff and um, hoping that that works. And I think going forward, that is not going to work anymore. We have proof of concept with the drip marketing DAO that standard TradFi methods do indeed work. So ironing out the process would be huge win for the community and getting them involved so they can feel that they have ownership in this process versus left on the sidelines. And last but not least, that ties directly into the people, because if you have all that other stuff mapped out, then the people feel like it's not just a random DeFi project. It's something they're actually invested in and that they have the ability to change and impact. So it's not just the team, but the community as well need to listen and engage and empathize. The team needs to foster a culture of innovation, openness, and shared responsibility. And the community needs to focus on creating open dialogue, being responsive, and act on the feedback that is received from the team. So if you can have this synergistic pattern with community integrating and working together with the dev team and the dev team sharing things directly with the community, man, the sky is the limit. It's crazy. So. I hope that made some sense. And again, I um, hope there's people out there that resonate with that kind of trajectory. Uh, this is what I believe can indeed be done from the community side. You know, even if we don't get the direct support from the team, this is things that the community can take over. There is no reason that other projects cannot build on top of what we have and leverage these different aspects from the ground up. The, the contracts are built. The ecosystem is built. It's okay. Let's just get to work and fix the other underlying issues outside of the contracts. So that's my thesis and hope you enjoyed that. If you did smash that HBO special, help brother out, like, subscribe, comment down below. And until next time, lift daily and achieve your possible. See ya. Want to pay your in real life bills with crypto? How about send crypto directly to anyone with a bank account? Spritz Finance is a decentralized solution to be your own bank and connect your crypto earnings to real world bills and payments. They do not take custody of your assets and allow support on multiple blockchains and Web3 wallets. Sign up below using my referral link and you will get $50 back when you make your first $50 bill payment with crypto. Additionally, I will be using referral bonuses to airdrop, donate, or burn based on community feedback. Sign up now.